Hi everyone, what's going on? My name is Nathan and in this video, I want to show you how you can build an iOS app in just minutes using AI even if you are a complete beginner. Now, to create an iOS app, you will need a running Mac machine. I am currently using a MacBook, but you can also use iMac, Mac Studio, Mac Mini, or any Mac computer will be okay. You also have to download Xcode from the Apple App Store. It's the app used for building and developing software for Apple devices. The app size is a bit large, so it may take some time to complete. Once you download Xcode, open it, and you will see a screen where you can select the platforms you want to develop for. Check on the iOS option, then click the download and install button. You might be asked for your computer password to install the software, so just enter your password here. Now Xcode is installing the iOS platform for us, which we'll need to build iOS apps. While waiting for Xcode to finish, let's head over to cursor.com and install cursor on your computer. Now cursor is an AI powered code editor that will write the code for your iOS apps. There is a few other code editor out there as well, but if you're just starting out, Cursor is perfect as it has a 2 weeks pro trial where you have unlimited use as shown in the pricing page here. So go ahead and download and install Cursor to your computer. And when that's done, let's go back to Xcode. By the way, I have created another video here showing the best way to get started with Cursor. The link is in the description, so be sure to check that out if you're interested. Alright, so once the platform support is installed, you will see the Xcode main menu as shown here. On the right side, you can see previously created projects, but it will be empty if this is your first time opening Xcode. On the main menu here, we can create a new project, clone a Git repository, or open an existing project. Let's select create new here, and then you will see the template selection menu as follows. Here, just select the app option that you can find under the iOS menu at the top here, and then click next. Now, you are asked to enter some details about your project, such as the app name, UI framework, programming language to use, and so on. First, we will enter the app name. Here, let's type Habitly as we will create a habit tracker iOS app. We will enter Team Last as I will explain its use. So next, you need to enter Organization Identifier, which is just a unique ID for your organization. This is usually a domain name, so I entered codewithnathan.com here. If you don't have a domain name, don't worry, you don't need to buy one, you can just enter your name. And then there's the bundle ID here, automatically filled with organization ID plus product name. Again, this is simply a unique ID that Apple use internally to identify your app. Next, we have the interface framework, make sure that Swift UI is selected. And the programming language used will be Swift. And we will leave none for both testing system and storage, as they are a bit advanced. Alright, now everything is filled except the team account. So this team account is the Apple developer account membership that you will need to run your app in iOS devices as well as deploying the app to the App Store. To create an account, you can head over to account.apple.com and follow the instructions there. Once you have an account, click the add account button here and then enter your email or phone number. After that, input your password, then click next or press enter and your Apple account should be added as shown on the screen here. Now close this team account window and back in project detail, you should be able to select the account you just added to Xcode. Alright, now that everything is ready, click next and you will be asked to select a folder where the app files will be generated. I will select this iOS-playground folder that I have created before, but you can select any folder that's empty and easy to find as we will add this project to cursor later. Now click create and Xcode will proceed to generate the project files for you and open it in Xcode as well. Let's wait for a moment here as the app is loading. And now the app is ready and you can begin to customize it as you please. First, the left window here is the navigation window where you can select any files in the project. The content of that file will be shown in the middle screen here which is the code editor. And if you open a file with preview hashtag as this content view file, you will see the user interface rendered on the right side as shown here. This iOS preview is actually live, so if you edit anything in the file, it will be reflected on the preview. For example, let's change this hello world message. I will change the text world with boss. And you can see the change is immediately reflected here on the preview. One more important thing to know here is that you can also run the app on a simulator. All you need to do is press the play icon on the top left corner over here. 
Xcode will build the application and then start an iOS DeFi simulator. Uh, it will take a moment to load here. And once the simulator is online, Xcode will install the app there and then automatically open it for us to see as well. Now if we go back to Xcode interface, here on the top middle, we can select the target simulator we want to use. There are many devices available such as the iPhone 16 Pro, iPad Air, iPad Mini, and so on, but just leave it at the default for now as we will focus on iOS development. Next, we will put this iOS app in cursor and start using AI to write the code for us. Now before we get into the exciting part, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just click on the subscribe button down below and please help me reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year as it will mean a lot to me making me feel more excited to create useful videos just like this one. Alright, so here in the main screen of cursor, click on the open project button here and then open the iOS app project we created in Xcode earlier. Now that the iOS app project is in Cursor, there are two documentations we need to add to Cursor before sending a request to it. First, head over to Apple Swift documentation language over here, and then copy the link to this website. Back in Cursor, type Add Docs, and then select the Add New Doc option at the bottom of the list. Here, paste the Apple Swift documentation link we just copied earlier, and then press Enter. This will add Swift documentation to cursor, and here we can name the documentation. I will just name this as Apple Swift and then click confirm. Now there is one more documentation we need to add, and that is the Apple design tips as shown here, on how to best design iOS apps. So let's copy the link again, and then back in cursor, type add docs again to add a new documentation, and then paste the link again, and then confirm to add this documentation. These two documentations will ensure that Cursor is using the latest information when developing the iOS app. Now we can start asking Cursor to develop the app for us. Here, I will ask Cursor to create an iOS habit tracker app with features including the list of habits with progress tracking, ability to add, edit, and delete habits, daily straight tracking, calendar view to see habit completion history, and statistics or insights. With the prompt set, Press enter and cursor will now begin to work on the app. First, it will read the existing files. And then after a while, it will start generating files and code to complete the request. Here we can see it created a new habit.swift file and write many lines of code in that file. It will continue to generate other files required for this app until it thinks the request is completed. Now this generation will take a few minutes, so I will skip ahead to when it's finished. Okay, so here Cursor already finished the development, and you can see that it created 10 files and more than a thousand lines of code. We can explore the files generated by Cursor here, but we're not going to do that. Instead, let's go back to Xcode, and here we can already see the changes reflected in the preview, so let's run this app in the simulator. Replace the app instance already running in the simulator. Now here's the app running in the simulator, so let's add our first habit here. Let's add a daily meditation habit, uh, select a category, uh, select health here, write some description, and then the goal here will be 3 times daily, and then set the color to orange, and then tap the add button on the top here. And here's the habit added to the app, uh, let's try to complete this. Okay, the progress indicator goes up. Now let's see the calendar view here. Okay, we have calendar here, and we can see habits completed on a specific date. Um, next, tap on the stats view here, and we can see the statistics of habits completed, either weekly, monthly, or yearly. Now go back to habits, try to swipe this habit row, and yeah, we can swipe to the right, and now to the left to edit or delete this habit. Uh, so let's try to delete this habit. Okay, the habit is now removed. Now let's try to add again. This time it's a habit to exercise, and just fill some details here. And so yeah, the app is already functional, and you can see that all of this is generated with a single prompt. So great job, Cursor. If there's something you would like to change in the app, you can simply go back to Cursor and send another request. For example, I can ask to add icons to the habits to make it more informative, but I think this is enough for now. Instead, 
Let's learn how to create icons for iOS apps next. Now that the app is created, the next thing we're going to do is to create an icon for this app. To add icons to iOS app is very simple. You just need to click the assets file on the left side here, and then you can insert your app icons in the app icon option here. There are three icon variants that you can add to iOS, which are any appearance, dark, and tinted. If you don't have an icon, you can generate one using AI. First, head over to Apple icon guidelines over here. Don't worry, you don't need to read through this guide. Just copy the link here and then go to chatgpt.com and ask ChatGPT to fetch the content of the page for us. Let ChatGPT work for a moment and then it will give a summary of the guidelines provided by Apple. We can then ask ChatGPT to create an iOS app icon based on these guidelines. For example, here I'm asking to create one for a habit tracker app. Now press enter and let ChatGPT generate the icon for a while. Okay, so here's the icon generated by ChatGPT. It seems to use the layered icon design based on the liquid glass design introduced by Apple. To be honest, I don't really like it, but this will do for this tutorial. Download this image to the computer, and then back in Xcode, we can simply drag and drop the image to the designated icon box here. Put the same icon for all variants. Now, if you're building a real app, it's recommended to have icon variants, but this will do for now. Okay, let's run the app again, and this time in the simulator, click on the home button to see the home screen, and here we can see the Habitly app icon is used correctly. And that's how you can generate an icon for iOS app. If you like this video and would love to support the channel, you can consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below. Or you can consider joining my YouTube membership where you can use this channel's emojis, get early access to new videos, plus a lot more. But overall, that's how you can develop iOS apps with the help of AI. After creating the iOS app project in Xcode, you can immediately open it in Cursor, provide the Apple Swift and UI design tips documentations to Cursor, and then let Cursor know what app you want to make. After that, you can leave it until Cursor is finished, and then you can tweak the app further if you feel unsatisfied. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. I hope this simple iOS development workflow helps you to see how you can turn your idea into a real iOS app that people can use and enjoy. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and get some value out of it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I will join the conversation and reply as often as I can. If you're new to the channel, Co with Nathan is a channel dedicated to simplify complex tech topics so that you can master them easily. Make sure you subscribe if that's something you find interesting. Make sure you like this video, turn on the notification bell, all the good stuff as it helps this channel to grow. With that being said, thanks again for watching until the end. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in other videos. Bye bye.